Hi, I'm Joe. I'm one of the client relationship managers at At Space, and today I'm going to talk to you about what makes a passive house. A passive house is a more robust build standard developed by the Germans in the 1990s by a gentleman named Dr. Wolfgang Feist. It's a build principle that promotes a more energy efficient and self-sustaining home. So first and foremost, anyone can build a passive house. So you or me can build one, um, but to be certified, to have the plaque on the wall, it'll be a certified passive house. You need to be, it needs to be designed uh, via an architect or designer using the PHPP, which is the Pla Passive House Planning Package, uh, which is accreditation, nothing to do with building regs. It's a separate accreditation uh, done via the Passive House Trust uh, that an architect or designer will go to, means they can design fully fledged certified passive houses. The secondly, passive houses follow five principles. The first is MVHR, which is a mechanical ventilation system with heat recovery. An MVHR system essentially extracts the stale hot air from the wet rooms, so your kitchens and your bathrooms, extracts it out of the property. At the same time, fresh air is being drawn into the property, passing through an air-to-air -air heat exchanger, which warms up the cold air from the cold fresh air being drawn in and put into the habitable rooms. They're around 90 to 96% efficient, so the heat that you're, you're, you're creating by your wet rooms is being retained and then filtered into your habitable spaces, meaning your heating system has to work less. And a, a, a passive house doesn't, doesn't have conventional heating systems. This is a great way to retain the heat and naturally heat the property up. The second principle is high quality insulation. So as it goes without saying, having high quality insulation, lots of it in all the walls, the roof, ceilings, uh, and the floor as well, making the fabric efficiency of the property very high, making the heat be retained and not lost through the walls. This moves next on to the third principle, which is thermal bridge free. Uh, thermal bridging can count up to 30% of heat loss within properties through the, through the fact of losing it through the junctions where it's not insulated. Uh, so all the junctions are highly insulated, goes hand in hand with a high quality insulation to prevent any fabric heat loss um, and any heat wasted or energy wasted within the property. So the fourth principle is high quality glazing, uh, typically triple glazing, which is arg usually argon filled and um, prevents any heat loss through the winter, uh, maximizing solar gain through the winter and minimizing solar gain through the summer. Uh, you don't want your glass to be you know, allowing all, this, all the heat in like we've got right like today, all the sun coming in, warming the property up, overheating it, um, but then also allowing the, the heat to escape when it's cold. So uh, designed in a way to maximize solar gains through the winter, minimize them through the summer. This is also done with a combined uh, shading as well and blinds, and things like that. The final principle is airtight construction. Passive houses need to achieve a maximum air change rate of 0.6 air changes an hour. Air leakage is vital in building energy efficient homes, so minimizing the air leakage of properties. So passive house as a standard across all buildings need to achieve a maximum of 0.6 air changes an hour. Thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to know any more information about passive houses, then please check out the Knowledge Hub and don't forget to like and subscribe.